Good evening. Greetings from the Institute of Global Professional IGP Bangladesh. Greetings from the Institute of Global Professional IGP Bangladesh. Thank you all for joining us and staying with us till the end. Honorable knowledge seeker, today I'm your host for the evening. My name is Babhun Dash. I am from Bangladesh. Dear knowledge seeker, I am proud to be associated with IGP as a global member. IGP is a social and ISO certified international training institution. In three years, we already served 3 million plus knowledge seekers from 100 plus countries. IGP is internationally recognized and globally accredited. We are connected to more than 250 professions and 4,500 plus organizations. In Institute of Global Professional, IGP is a training faculty for skill development, which was founded in 2020 yeah, and is generating competent candidates to meet demand in the global labor market by providing professional qualification. The Institute of Global Professional is an education institute that provides social work globally recognized and reputable. We serve students and community resource providing holistic social work and education. We believe that it's not effective training, it's one skill just by acquiring formal education. So we provide effective training and consultation to generate proficient generation all over the world. We distribute our services locally and nationally, internationally to student job seeker, job holder, and also for learner, the respective campus location and distance learning platform. We are an occupational and dependable institute. IGP is one of the famous online institutes from all over the world. Our vision is education is not a business product, it's a part of our human right. Based on our vision, we are trying to reach all corners of the world for free webinars, seminar courses, award, quiz competition, mentoring, and counseling, etc. On the other side, we are also trying to serve more than 100 premium services for free, like create own portfolio website, resume builder, cover letter, motivation letter, and wow knowledge platform for gathering general knowledge, which can upgrade all day. Kids learning game, 
Website free course, Converse sites, and many, many more. We help to empower you to learn to meet their expectations and dream and become highly skilled people. We implement several training program, webinar, and offline online courses for youth and learner by professional trainer, speaker, and coaches. Our session are conducted by globally renewed professionals to develop all kinds of youth and to promote the education of their abilities and personalities. To ensure excellence and in-depth instruction, we arrange with qualified trainer, speaker, and instructor. We extended free services to more than 3 million knowledge seekers in last three years. We have affiliation with universities and organizations in 70 different countries. Virtual more signing with many colleges and organizations have been accomplished. We are trying to work to create a legendary generation of future scholars and citizens who will back out as well. We are constantly prepared to assist all knowledge seekers with valuable service. A spreading knowledge is crucial for the Institute of Global Professional. We believe that knowledge is love and light and vision. So we try to understand the needs of today's generation and we will serve them with good research and practice methods. We must have a general concern for the learner. We represent more diversity, growth, and innovation are right. To lead a session with professionalism, passion, and integrity. IGP members are committed to offering best quality service and continual improvement so that individuals who seek information can improve their skill level and develop. Before we move to the next, let me remind don't forget to share, tag, and mention your friend in the comment boxes. Support is very valuable for us. Thank you. Before we move to the next, let me remind don't forget to share, tag, and mention your friend in the comment box. Your support is very valuable for us. Thank you. Moving to the next with your continuous support, we already completed 1,337 webinars successfully. Wow. Moving to the next with your continuous support, we already completed 1,337 webinars successfully. Wow. At present, we are going to start our 1,338 program, which name is Impacts of Artificial intelligence and studio speaker's name is Faisal Fayaz. He is from Pakistan. Before I hand over the stage to our speaker, sir, wants to share a very little bit about him. Cambridge certified computer science teacher, Microsoft innovative educator expert, Wakelet community leader, qualified member of Project Ma Management Institute, USA. Educational Ambassador of International Organization of Educator and Researcher, International Youth Society, World Voice of International, former Associate Secretary of Pakistan Gymnastic Federation. Now, very important moment for me to invite our speaker to IGP with his presentation. Now, very important moment for me to invite our speaker to IGP with his presentation. Hello, sir. Okay, ma'am. I'm ready. May I start my presentation? Sir, please present your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. Sir, please make oh, okay, sir. Uh, the stage is you. You can start your presentation now. Okay, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going okay, to start. sir. Okay, first of all, 
thank you very much institute of global professional that they provided me the opportunity to again uh, deliver my presentation on this platform i'm really grateful to all of you and today the topic of my presentation is impacts of artificial intelligence as you know very well that artificial intelligence is becoming ugly more important and more important as compared to the other and we are looking this thing that the things are now going uh, in such a way that you can judge that how the things can be made easier and how humans can get more benefit to the artificial intelligence so this artificial intelligence again giving one more thing that is it is giving the insights and the training while using minimum resources that how the things can be arranged and in this way we can save human lives we can use minimum resources we can basically enhance the potential of our young learners in this way we can also basically integrate it, integration with other systems as well and all things in front of us that after computer science evaluation uh, evaluation of what happened that each and everything become easy for us and after that cellular mobile communication and then the other things so artificial intelligence has already had a significant impact on our world and it is poised to continue to have an even greater impact in the future so here are some of the points that i will discuss to do today with you all people that why artificial intelligence is so much important what are the impacts it is playing nowadays you know very well that humans always make the things try to make the things easier and whatever the technology and research we are looking it's all about to this thing that how we can develop frictionless technology tools methods or the other things so the basic agenda of research technology and each and everything is only this thing that we can make the thing easier for our humans and due to this reason we know very well that different kinds of artificial intelligence uh, you are using basically in medical science in education field pedagogical approaches and then you are looking in your media uh cable media tv media electronic media social media and then in other fields your agriculture sectors your engineering your mining and all these things basically related to this artificial intelligence that robotics is the new thing mechatronics is a new basically subjects is coming and biotechnology bioinformatics these are the basically origin of this thing that how we can improve the things more and more and make the things easier for our human just one minute i'm just opening my presentation what happened so when we talk about its basically impacts or the other thing so there are different automation personalization your healthcare finance decision customer services and there are many other fields education environmental impact and different things in front of us so we cannot neglect the importance of artificial intelligence in this era we know very well that nowadays things are more and more Hello, sir. yes ma'am as uh, sir we cannot uh, see the slides in this screen uh, yes i am just opening this so after that we are looking this thing that how artificial intelligence become a digital in transformation tool and 
while sitting in front of you virtually i'm in pakistan you are in bangladesh but our voice our picture each and everything we are sharing we are communicating and it's all about true digital communication digital transformation and digital transmission but again digital transformation again it's a tool of artificial intelligence reason is this we are making the things easier and more easier so when we talk about the automation so artificial intelligence is being used to automate a wide range of tasks from routine administrative tasks to more complex tasks such as driving cars and flying planes so if anyone who is basically playing a video game on computer or on digital app or any other thing whatever uh, he wants to love that, to do that thing he is doing on his device nowadays but on the other hand if we see the physically the things become more difficult and more dangerous as well and again there is a need to arrange different resources as well so when we talk about personalization that the thing i talked to you that everyone now is free to do anything this is innovation era we can communicate we can share we can do anything and no one can stop us and we are free to do this thing we are ready to invent or innovate anything but if we just look at the past the things are not more easier that if you want to do anything so there is a need a lot of hurdles and uh, resources and permission government administrative responsibilities policies and there are many other things due to which reason we could not survive and we, we are not able to do that thing now overall the thing that we will cover its introduction what is ai ai in healthcare sector reason i will cover specifically this thing reason is this that whatever ai it's all about human pros pros and cons what are the advantages and disadvantages we will discuss drawbacks use cases opportunities and after that we will discuss about the conclusion so this is overall agenda of today's session so if we just look at this thing personalization that i discuss with you that now everyone is free to do anything so ai artificial intelligence algorithms are being used to personalize content and recommendation for user based on their past behavior and preferences and nowadays we are looking that everyone is basically doing different kinds of research paper different kinds of innovation inventions even uh, humans are basically updating some of the theories and policies as well so healthcare if we talk about artificial intelligence again it's being used to analyze medical data and assist in medical diagnosis and treatment plan when we talk about finance so obviously different algorithms are being used to analyze financial data and make investment decisions uh, customer service is in front of you a different call center has been in, developed and due to these call centers we, they are always 24 hour available to serve you whatever the problem you people have it's already being basically in process to solve your queries or the something like so ai chat box nowadays uh, it's very fam famous chat gpt and the other thing are being used to provide customer services are uh, answering frequently questions ask questions and resolving simple issue whatever you have when we talk about ai in education so we are looking this thing that uh, if we talk about earlier communities so they are not able to share or communicate their insights or their thing but now we are able to communicate and we are able to see anything education is now it's become a global village it has become and everyone is able to connect and can get free education from anyone from any teacher from any community person from any country person as well so the it's a basically it's a global village which is basically border free you can say all humans are equal and every one is the human of this planet and this global village is our home and each are each and every one is important in this planet so due to this all all the sciences research and ai is being processed and developed 
so when uh, basically a person asks me that what do you think what is technology or what is basically uh, the purpose of research what is the main thing and why technology and research is being developed and uh, still it's going on then i said it's only for ease of human reason is this that from the start if we see that when we when humans live in the jungle they basically again they work together they pro- they learned how to protect themselves from different animals how to survive and in this way they are able to continue their basically continue to survive and still we are surviving and this one is only one species in the world which is basically who is basically surviving in this planet while there are many other species which are more talented more sharp than me more intelligent than humans but this one is the combination best combination developed by or fitted by in humans by god that we have all the abilities and capacities in short term and we are able to deliver in a very right way so now artificial intelligence if you just look at this thing is the simulation of human intelligence processes by machine especially computer system so this is a very simple thing that whatever you are basically thinking and you process something to make a plan so same like ai it's the same like thing but only the difference is this that whatever you are doing your inputted data it's basically it's goes in your brain and then you process but in ai you can say that uh, experts or technology experts want this thing they want to stress free environment for the humans so that they basically again they form this ai uh, technology due to which reason we are, uh, this technology is helping in such a way they are basically reducing the threshold and stress of humans now the brain processing whatever humans are doing now through this basically application you can do and you can get benefit chat gpt it's in front of us that everyone nowadays using and you just put a simple question and after that it will come so here the difference between the google search engine and chat gpt is what google search engine it's the only whatever you ask it provides you the link related to the search queries which data is available on the different web servers but on the other hand chat gpt is doing one step ahead of this thing that first of all the search data will be compiled uh, according to link and after that there is a expert system which translate and try to make a rational outcome through these links to the available data and create a better outcome so if we see edu- in education ai is being used to personalize learning experiences for students and provide feedback to teachers environmental impact is in front of us that everyone is using whatsapp they are basically making different pictures and they are changing into different formats in different environments while putting different backdrops or something so ai is being used to optimize energy consumption and reduce waste leading to a more sustainable future and it ai is useful if we use it in a right way so these are some of the types of ai capabilities and functionalities so capabilities it's what that what you can do and functionalities it's this that after the having capabilities what the thing can you process so here i want to show one video and after that we will go to the next point this one Everything becomes linked with everything else. Matter becomes mind, and the possibilities become endless. Imagine 50 billion IoT connected devices by 2020. Imagine the economic impact of these connected machines. 
4 to 11 trillion dollars per year by 2025. Wearable devices, environmental sensors, agricultural machinery, components in a vehicle, or devices in homes can all be connected to deliver insights and drive transformation. So imagine if you had smart devices in your home, your car, your workplace, or even on yourself. The world becomes alive. That's Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is making everyday objects into data factories. When Internet of Things, along with big data, meets artificial intelligence, this interface will become enlivened with intelligence and a new world will take birth which will increasingly talk back to us. Imagine the kind of world that it would be. Imagine the revolution that will usher in the way we see the world. The external world will become the extension of our mind, like an extension of our thoughts. Imagine a world that is responsive, a world that is optimized for human creativity, a world that is intelligent. The Internet of Things is a breeding ground for new AI-driven solutions and experiences, from self-driving cars to intelligent homes to health. Welcome to the world of endless possibilities. Welcome to AI and IoT Summit. So in this video clip, you have seen that how the things are interconnected and basically connected to each other where each and everything is serving to human. And they are basically making the thing easier for humans. In earlier times, whatever you have or humans have to do the things personally by themselves. But now, whatever the dangers, hazards, whatever the problem, the expiry of mill, whatever, it can be processed through different uh, intelligent machines. And it's all due to artificial intelligence. So these are some of the points. Evolution, evolution of artificial intelligence, how companies are using artificial intelligence, building AI capabilities, how can AI help organization meet digital transformation goals, six stages of digital transformation, AI best practices for digital transformation, uh, challenges for artificial intelligence. So here the digital communication, transformation and transmission, this is the same thing. When data from one place to move to another place, we say it's a data transformation. So here again, when data move from one place to another, then obviously humans always send something to process something and to get some outcome. So same like things are here. If we just look at the computer uh, ages, so computer science ages, the first stage or age, you can say it's a vacuum tube. And that was the period of before 1948. After 1948, the second, which is transistors, and third, it's uh, integrated circuit. Fourth is your artificial, in uh, fourth is your microprocessor. And after that, artificial intelligence, which is still going on, and we are getting a lot of surprises and miracles nowadays that uh, our brain is not basically able to accept that thing, but the things are happening and going on in this world due to this different digital technologies. So narrow artificial intelligence. So this is one of the things that assists with the single task. You have a device, you have a just a basically app, which is helping you in such a way uh, that where you are moving and what is the target of your destination on the planet or everywhere. You are looking that Google map, it's a very uh, scientific, basically it has been designed with longitude, latitude and each and every surface of the earth it has been basically measured and according to that whatever you just set your destination you uh, you basically get the direction distance and the measurement of your timing duration whatever so all things are possible through you can get the complete data that what is the destination what is the distance between your source and your destination what the things come and how what 
kind of duration is there. So these are again different things that how the things become basically processed in such a way that programmable mechanical calculating machine in 2007, 2008, Turing tests, then 2009 artificial intelligence, the first conference, uh, basically 2010 general problem solver, 2011 industrial robot, ELISA and the first expert system. ELISA is a device where through that you just communicate and she will reply you. So it's uh, artificial intelligence physical device first time which basically totally based on voice recognition. It basically identify the voice of human and after that according to that uh, while processing different things through the artificial intelligence it process and create some outcome. Then Mac hack knowledge based medical diagnostic system program commercial expert system 2010 and 2017 recommendation technology 2018 mobile recommendation and 2019 the most important thing machine learning and deep learning due to which reason now uh, basically expert system basically finalize and gives us some outcome so this one is this perfect like a human this is one of the object but after that super artificial intelligence is smarter than human man it is it gives you and gives power to human Due to which reason human can basically enhance and get optimal outcome as well how companies are using artificial intelligence so this one is the thing that information technology marketing finance customer services and there are different ratio where through that it is has been identified now ai in healthcare sector early detection of diseases improved decision making aid in treatment end of life care connected care better overall experience so you know very well that uh, humans having average life 65 years 70 or 60 and in better places and at better places you can see uh, america or europe the age may be the death rate uh, is maybe eight years or something like but it depends on the thing that how much work how much uh, peacefully the person is surviving etc so thinking machine are there tasks which cannot easily be automated if so what are the limitations how do computer abilities compare to that of human again this thing that microprocessor is the inventor of microprocessor is Ted Hoff who invented the first microprocessor which was Intel 4004 in 1972 and that processor having 60,000 transistors and it having the capacity 20,000 transactions per second. But what happened that humans develop a machine which is able to compile the result through some logical decisions and possible combinations. After that, it's able to produce some outcome. And we are looking that microprocessor is doing whatever the instruction we give to computer computer is able to proceed and it's just process like a slave to us computer versus human a computer can do some things better than a human can adding a thousands four digits number drawing complex 3d images store and retrieve massive amount of data however there are things human can do much better so there are something that humans made this machine, make this machine while analyzing the working of internal and external and uh, the brain potential of human. But again, there is one thing that still humans are able to understand the working of neurons and brain processing as well. Humans are not 100% uh, or fully able to understand uh, the basically brain potential but to some extent uh, they have basically identified they know that how brain is working what are the parts and something like but there are some things which are still undiscoverable unexplorable as well and humans and ai uh, it's basically doing the same thing for human to open the basically secrets that what's the secrets behind that we know very well that Bermuda Triangle, uh, Bermuda and your Egyptian mummies and your Egyptian pyramids and there are many other uh, things and myths are available in the world which are basically, which we cannot say or science is unable to describe clearly 
separate what is the mechanism and what is the basically processing of this thing or something and why it's happening in the world. So thinking machines, a computer would have difficulty identifying the cat or matching it to another picture of cat. So this one is cat uh, you are looking here. So if we just look at this, this is a live object, live species in front of us, but it having and it is thinking and doing the same thing according to its emotions, senses, whatever, fitted by God in it. And according to the basically capabilities and the things, uh, it performed different actions. So capability, it's the basically thing through that you can do, you basically define your boundary or limitation. But on the other hand, when we say the function, function is this thing, which is at what extent you can do and you are able to perform that thing. So thinking machines is this thing, this card is again thinking something and you can see that if what is positive or negative, what is, we do not know. Computer or human. So which of the following occupations could or be performed by computers, postman, bookstore clerk, librarian, doctor, lawyer, judge, professor. So these are different professions that are going and uh, humans are performing different actions and functions in the capacity of these professions or something like. But again, there are basically some problems humans are facing. And AI, artificial intelligence, experts, research want to make free of these burdens stress, mental pressure or something like. So this is all about this thing that how we can uh, make the human a stress free or a peaceful person while helping him to basically to become calm or just survive and just be relaxed. Now thinking machines. Artificial intelligence, the study of computer system that attempt to model and apply the intelligence of human mind. For example, writing a program to pick out objects in a picture. So this one is the thing that humans, according to the basically senses, design and process something. So writing a program to pick out objects in a picture that whatever you are looking, according to that, you will respond. And according to that, you will identify different things. So same like if this work, or this task we assign to AI application or AI robot, then obviously humans become free and human only will give the order and the machine or the digital lab will do this thing. First thing first, of course, we have to understand why we use the term intelligence in regard to human. So intelligence is the thing that it always comes through different experiences, through knowledge or through some information. The first thing comes data and if we process the data, data is your unprocessed basically that information and it's a raw facts and figure and when we basically process it, then it's become information for human. And when a person again work on information and try to make some more rational report and working on the information to get knowledge, so it's become the knowledge of the specific person. So same thing is this, that intelligence, it always basically due to your experience, knowledge, information, and your work experience. So same like if we basically provide these things to the machine, then machine will follow and according to the basically logical things, logical parameter and combination, machine will decide and machine will create the outcome as human are doing. And it's example, it's in front of us that microprocessor you are looking at whatever you are doing you are working on computer it's all created and generated by microprocessor so same like that microprocessor is not intelligent but microprocessor it has been designed in such a way that it basically compile the different possibilities and after that create a rational outcome as you basically ordered and as you said but ai is much more than this one ai is, is doing a same like after that it basically uh, review your data information while 100 years or 200 years data forecasting or predicted data 
and after that make a rational report which basically just like your weather forecast report it's uh, all generated by different expert system in the world and we are looking that weather forecast is helping to everyone in the world that we are uh, basically become aware of this thing that where the rain will be and where the basically um, the temperature will be high or something like early history in 1950 english mathematician alan turing wrote a landmark paper titled computing machinery and intelligence that asked the question can machine think further work came out of a 1956 workshop at dartmouth sponsored by john mccarthy who is the father of artificial intelligence in the proposal for that workshop he coined the phrase a study of artificial intelligence so one that ellen turing basically she is the basically mathematician who basically entitled a thing and put a question there that computing machinery and intelligence and can machine think or not and the answer was given by john mccarthy study of artificial intelligence that with different possibilities and different tools we can do this thing while integrating different data can machines think so during us can machine think he felt that such machines would eventually be constructed but he also realized a bigger problem how would we know if we have succeeded so again if you give the instinct of humans senses emotions or the other thing so every human is here to rule on another human so ruling property is by default in every human due to which reason humans are surviving in this earth and every country and every citizen having a basically a sense of humor, a duty, responsibility, and all these things. So we have very uh, basically, sh you can say short term things, but we have a large capacity which is best designed by God. And this is the best thing. The Turing test, Turing test is a test to empirically determine whether a computer has achieved intelligence so in a Turing test, the interrogator must determine which respondent is computer and which is the human. So respondent A and respondent B is there and there is interrogator. So in this way, they are communicating and after that, the uh, basically outcome will be there that how the things will be managed. Passing the Turing test does not really show that the machine was thinking. It simply shows that it generated behavior consistent with thinking weak equivalence the two system human and computer are equivalent in result but they do not necessarily arrive at those results in the same way so weak equivalence and strong equivalence is there the two system use the same internet processes to produce the result then turing test uh, lubner prize the first formal inst instantiations were of the turing test held annually chatbots a program designed to carry on a conversation with the human user and after that knowledge representation in front of us we want to compare the way that computers and humans work to see if we can better understand why each have their uh, computational strength processing models knowledge representation reasoning or something so ai chatbots are being used to provide customer service uh, helping and uh, integrating different things, answering frequently asked questions and resolving every issue and simple issues as well so in this way we are connected to each other and education you can see this thing during COVID pandemic uh, when all the things and uh, due to basically follow up of sops everyone become struck at homes and this one is the only technology through that we are able to communicate and the wheel of the world be in a in a basically in running due to this technology and digital transformation due to which reason we are able to take classes we are able to attend meetings we are able to do work at home and different things so this is again siri ai aliza these are all the small app artificial intelligence application tools which has been designed to basically create a deep learning machine model and that has been invented in 2019 which is basically has been integrated your 
deep learning and machine learning in AI as well. And after that, chatbots in front of us and whatever the question we give it, give to it. And after that, it will process and expert system will produce outcome. Semantic networks, a knowledge representation technique that focuses on the relationship between objects. A directed graph is used to represent a semantic network or net. So this one is the thing you are looking here, semantic network. Eye color has a person, person is a student. So these are all the things you can understand that student I'm basically taking here, John. John, uh, instance of a student, John lives in Heritage Acres. John is a male and John instance of apartment complex. John is a student, is a person and has an eye color. John having a student ID number. On the other hand, Mary, she is a female. She lives in Daughtry and uh, she has ID number 21572313 and uh, she is uh, basically instance of dormitory and she is again student so in this way this semantic network which basically describes the properties attributes and features of every human every object or every instance so while connection of all these things it's become important and ai is able to do best thing for us so this one is i'm skipping semantic networks again this one is skipping Difficult question. For example, it would be difficult to ask how many students are female or how lives in Daughtry Hall. The answers are, are present, just difficult to find by searching here. So in this network, in this image, you uh, cannot find the answer of this thing. But when you have a large network, then obviously you are able to reply to this question. Search tree. A structure that represents alternative in additional uh, adversarial situations such as game playing or something. So path down a search tree represent a series of decisions made by the players. Example, there are a row of spaces. The game alternates. Player one may place one, two, or three in the leftmost subspaces. And player two, uh, it's basically may then place one, two, or three in the next spaces. Goal, place the last mark in the right more space. So this one is the basically search tree that you are looking. It's just like a structure chart where the hierarchy is clear. And the main thing it has been, uh, it's module wise and component wise has been distributed. And in this way, it's clear. So I'm skipping some of the slides. This one is again, uh, DFS, depth first search and breadth first search. So these are two different things so that we can find out the answer of our uh, queries and our thing, which are basically part of our artificial intelligence that how it works. So you can look this thing bed first search. It basically firstly try to finish the first level by checking all the things. While on the other hand, depth first search, it basically read at the end of the basically uh, lowest level and after that it able to make another search. So search free breadth strategies trying to be more successful and computationally feasible. Search tree analysis can be applied nicely to other more complicated games such as chess. In 1997, IBM's Deep Blue became the first program to defeat a master level chess player. So this is the point that how knowledge and knowledge management system and your artificial intelligence is playing role that as you communicate, as you work, same like the application or the object is performing. So I'm just basically uh, showing a video. This one, what is artificial intelligence exactly? Yeah. So in this movie, you have seen this thing that how it basically help out to humans to complete their tasks. And nowadays, the latest AI having a lot of types and a variety of artificial intelligence is available. So when we talk about expert system, so expert system is the thing which decide and which basically create the outcome after analyzing the whole data. So knowledge-based system software that uses a specific set of information from which it extracts and processes particular pieces. Expert system, a software system based the knowledge of human expert. It is rule-based system, a software system based on a set of if-then rules. 
in French engine, the software that processes rules to draw conclusion. So expert system is the most important uh, in the AI as well. Reason it, uh, after reviewing the whole data, it tried to create and uh, make the all possible outcomes. And after that, try to compile the rational outcome. So this picture, Gardner expert system example, it's in front of you. So you are looking here, trees, plants, and grasses here. So named abbreviation that represent conclusion. None apply no treatment at this time. Turf apply a turf building treatment. Weed apply a weed killing treatment. Bug apply a bug killing treatment. Feed apply a basic fertilizers treatment. And weed feed apply a weed killing and fertilizer combination treatment. So what happened that after reviewing the picture, these are the possible outcomes that we can do. There is a need of pesticide to kill the bugs and there is a need of cutting of grass or something like. So all the things basically after analyzing the picture, uh, the expert system will finalize. So Boolean variables needed to represent state of the lawn, where the lawn has large, bare areas, sparse the lawn is generally thin, weeds the lawn contains many weeds, bugs the lawn shows evidence of bugs. So these are all the things that these are available. Data that is available last, current, and season. Obviously, in different seasons, the basically circumstances will be different. And uh, what will be the last time that it was evaluated and what uh, in which way formulate some rules for our gardening expert system rules take the form of if then statement. So expert systems and rules, just like it's an example for you. If current minus last less than 30, then none. If season is equal to winter, then not bugs. If beer, then tough. If sparse and not weeds, then feed. If bugs are not sparse, then bug. If weeds are not sparse, then weed. So these are all the possible things which basically humans have to firstly finalize or review them. But now this AI application or this tool is helping us that there is no need to do anything. You just basically put a picture and this AI application will automatically check all the parameters and after that finalize and give you the suggestion that what it could be and what the things will, should be provided. So here you are looking execution of our inference engine. Does the ha lawn have large bare areas? No. There is a grass and greenery. Each garden is, uh, the whole garden is covered. Does the lawn show evidence of bugs? No, at this moment, we did not see any bug in the picture. Is the lawn generally thin? Yes. There is a greenery and plants and leaves are there. Does the lawn contain significant weeds? Yes, there are different kinds of weeds also along with grass are available. You should apply a weed killing and treatment, fertilizer combination, something like. So this is the basically final outcome. Now artificial neural network, a computer representation of knowledge that attempts to mimic the neural network of the human body. Yes, but what is a human neural network? So human neural network where all the parts and organs are connected to each other through different neurons, through different fibers, arteries and veins and whatever, each and everything is directly connected to your brain. And this all the basically having connected through human neural network. So now we are going to discuss what is neural network, uh, cell bodies there, nucleus, exon, synapse, and you are looking at it's a biological neuron, it's in front of us. Neuron is a single cell that conducts a chemically based electronic signal. At any point in time, a neuron is in either an excited state or an inhibited state. Excited state neuron conducts a strong signal, inhibited state neuron conducts a weak signal. So remember this thing that when we talk about the impacts of artificial intelligence, so we have we know very well that impacts of artificial intelligence are very basically uh, progressive and very good but again there are some drastic effects of ai as well which we will discuss later on but remember this thing what is ai and what is and how the things become 
basically profitable and optimal for us through this AI. These things should be clear to us. So this one is neural network I'm skipping. Uh, this one is the diagram neural network where you are looking the brain structure and it's all the parts have been discussed along the neural nets are in a constant state of flux as we learn new things new strong neural pathways in our brain are formed so when you learn new things automatically new neural pathways will build and it will be helpful for human each processing element in an artificial neural net is analogous to a biological neuron an element accept a certain number of input values dendrites and produces a single output value or exon of either zero or one associated with each input value is a numeric weight synapse so i'm skipping these slides so this one human versus computer so human brain speed neurotransmitters travel at about 1000 feet per second memory roughly 100 billion neurons about 50 trillion bits other each neuron connected to thousand other roughly on the other hand when we talk about the computer electrons at speed of light top supercomputers might approach this much memory mean still human memory uh, computer memory is not able to become equal to human memory Experts believe on this thing that after 2025, they are able to basically uh, to develop a processor or they are able to the basically same processing like human brain. But still, human brain is much more faster, better, efficient as compared to the designed microprocessor of humans. Here, again, the thing is this that experts are still working on it and there are many areas of uh, brain which are still not basically clearly explorable that how it works and what are the basically role of these parts but again researchers scientists medical doctors medical science teams they are trying to and overviewing and uh, getting the data and in this way they are formulating this thing that how the basically uh, things and brain basically create an optimal outcome as compared to machine. So still computer is behind of human brain. Human brain is much more uh, basically better than microprocessor. And we are still basically waiting of that time when computer memory, computer microprocessor become able or equal to human brain. Perhaps 100 parallel processors. So you can see this thing, each neuron connected to 1,000 others. So it means every neuron connected to others as well. So it means that your computer can be connected to 100 microprocessors or more than. But again, computer, it's a machine. It's not a biological thing. And on the other hand, we have a human brain, which is a biological and made by God. So still undiscoverable and unexplorable completely. So artificial intelligence has already had a significant impact on our world. And we are observing this thing that in education, in every field we are getting. If we want to train to any pilot, so it's very simple. You just provide and give them AI techniques and tools while playing video games the expert can, can know how to control the object and in this way they can learn something so it is a poise to continue to have an even greater impact in future so some of the things automation we have discussed personalization healthcare we have discussed and we cannot deny the importance of all these things so Voice recognition, natural language comprehension, voice synthesis, these are all the three basic types of processing going on during human computer voice interaction. Common to all of these problems is the fact that we are using a natural language, which can be any language that humans use to communicate. So natural language processing that when I speak English, the basically AI application is able to transmit or translate that thing into Urdu, Punjabi, Hindi, 
Arabic, or in any other languages. So natural language processing, basically what it does, that through voice recognition, it identifies the things and automatically it can be translated. If we just look at uh, 30 years ago, so if you want to basically uh, understand the other person language or other country person, so there is a need to learn that specific language. But nowadays, there is no need to learn that thing. You just basically have this AI tool or application and you just basically use this tool and in this way you can just basically listen in english or in any other language and transmit and get the outcome in your respective language so things become easier for human earlier there is a need to learn that language specific language and it takes time but now ai and digital science and computer science is saving the time of human by speeding up the processes and making the frictionless technology that humans just think and just uh, basically proceed the process. And after that, automatically, the machine is rational, intelligent, just like human brain. And according to that, it process and produce the outcome. So voice recognition, recognizing human words, natural language comprehension, interpreting human communication, voice synthesis, recreating human speech, Common to all of these problems is the fact that we are using a natural language, which can be any language that humans use to communicate. So it's become common for us that we have no problem wherever we live in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, America, Saudi Arabia. So you just have this application and you just transmit the voice and after that you will get the required outcome. And now the language barrier problem is over through this AI artificial intelligence so each and everything has become more easier as compared to previous history and this one is the first time in the world that when all the communities all the countries become uh, connected to each other this is the fun one of the civilization of this era when basically they are able to communicate they are able to share and they all at one place under one umbrella and this digital tool and technology helping out to humans where they can learn, move, improve, enhance, and transform each and everything. They are enhancing their profit while spreading their products, goods, uh, brochures, and any other things. So why this is one approach to this. I'm skipping. Dynamic voice generation and computer examines the letter that make up a word and produces the sequence of sounds that correspond to those letters in an attempt. To vocalize the word the phoneme phonemes the sound units into which human speech has been categorized so these are the voice senses the table through that symbols and their example are there and vowels consonants semi vowels and diphthongs so in this way the voice recognizes basically understand all that thing again this one is the thing i'm skipping voice recognition problem with understanding speech each person's sounds are unique each person's shape of mouth, tongue, throat, and nasal cavities that affect the pitch and, and the resonance of our spoken voice are unique. And speech impediments, mumbling, volume, regional accent, and the health of the speaker are further complications. Now, this one is voice recognition. You are looking the mouth and jaw of open jaw. You are looking that the basic internal structure of your mouth and you are looking each and everything okay i'm going to now start a video uh, this is the time of of tari in pakistan so i'm just give me five minutes i'm coming but here is i'm playing a video just this one by 2050 our planet will be a vastly different place so this video, it's all about to this thing that how AI basically changing our future, how and what are the impacts we are looking in through AI, artificial intelligence. So category wise, each and everything is there and you will see that uh, it's positive and unique impacts we will see here. By 2050, artificial intelligence will be everywhere. 
AI-driven stores will allow you to purchase goods without cashiers or waiting lines. AI will diagnose and treat patients, manage transportation, and analyze massive quantities of data. AI chatbots and voice recognition systems sound like and behave just like real people. AI will be implemented into robots. By 2050, robot dogs and other pets will serve as companions. Robots will dominate factories and begin to serve as teachers, cooks, pharmacists, law enforcement officers, athletes, and other professionals. In 2050, universal translators will remove all language barriers and voice recognition will be ubiquitous. Hundreds of sensors will be installed in our clothes, homes, and overall environment to monitor our well-being and improve our lives. Computing will change. By 2050, we may run on quantum computers. Based on the properties of quantum physics, quantum computers could deliver massive leaps in computing power, outstripping any current transistor-based models. AI and computers will integrate into humans. Brain chips like Elon Musk's Neuralink will treat neurological disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury, and blindness. These brain chips will allow people to control computers and prosthetics with no physical interaction. At 2050, they can control things with their minds and communicating brain signals. By 2050, robotic prosthetics may be stronger and more advanced than our own biological ones. Prosthetic eyes and ears will enter the market during blindness and deafness. And in 30 years, like AI, virtual reality will be everywhere. People will try on clothes in virtual reality closets, and holograms will bring FaceTime to a new level. VR platforms will allow you to move around while staying still. We will be able to travel the world and experience life on other planets, all from home. In 2014, 320,000 new electric vehicles were registered around the world. In 2019, that number was 2.3 million. By 2025, global EV sales are projected to surpass 10 million. And by 2050, the majority of automobiles will be electric. Gas stations will disappear and be replaced with at-home charging stations, refueling vehicles in as low as 10 minutes. Automobiles will become driverless. As of now, Tesla vehicles already have autopilot features that achieve level 2 automation on the Society of Automotive Engineers Vehicle Automation Ranking. Other companies, such as Google, have invested billions of dollars into self-driving technology. Currently, it's expected that fully autonomous level 5 vehicles will roll out to consumers in the late to mid-2020s and become commonplace in the 2030s. By 2050, people will be hopping into cars with no steering wheel. Thousands of autonomous vans and semi-trucks will travel across country, delivering packages and shipments with no human interaction. Drones will do the same for shorter distances. By 2050, swarms of drones will be delivering small packages from floating or vertical warehouses. There will also be surveillance and security drones, along with drones for construction, entertainment, and agriculture. eVTOLs, or electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, will provide urban transportation. Currently, there are several working eVTOL aircraft prototypes. The urban market for them is massive, and studies have revealed that the technology could become highly profitable. One of the companies working on eVTOLs is Uber, who wants to make aerial ride-sharing a reality. There's also Airbus, who have their drone-like Airbus pop-up concept. If Uber, Airbus, and other companies succeed, we could see widespread adoption of the technology. By 2050, Cities will likely have air taxis everywhere, but that may not work. Elon Musk says that roads must go 3D, which means either flying cars or tunnels. He believes the answer is tunnels. Right now, Elon Musk's boring company is digging small experimental tunnels under cities. If Musk can significantly cut down boring costs, by 2050, cities will have thousands of tunnels underneath them. Another one of Musk's brainchilds, Hyperloop, will revolutionize long-distance land transportation. Hyperloop, the idea for vacuum maglev high-speed trains, could speed up to 700 miles per hour. A trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco would be only 43 minutes long, compared to a six-hour car ride. By 2050, Hyperloop systems will certainly be constructed. 
and replacing airplanes may evolve into the most popular type of long-distance domestic travel. But for travel between continents, airplanes will remain dominant. With improved batteries, we could see electric airliners take to the skies. In addition, several companies are working to bring back supersonic aircraft. These aircraft are certainly not airliners, but small-scale jets meant to carry only 10 to 100 people. By 2050, we could have Concorde-like, but safer, supersonic aircraft soaring through the skies. Or, as an alternative to airplanes, what if we traveled around in rockets? Well, Elon Musk wants to use his Starship to transport people all around the world soon. In Musk's Starship, one could travel from New York to London in only 29 minutes. <clears throat> Our energy... <clears throat> okay, after this, we just, we have seen that how voice recognition basically basically in our daily life and this is only due to our artificial intelligence <coughs> so voice recognition human speak in a continuous flowing manner stringing words together sound like phrases like ice cream and ice cream so homonym such as I and I are C and C. Humans can often clarify these situations by the context of the sentence, but that processing requires another level of comprehension. So we can see this thing that how intelligent this one, that it is helping out to human to solve the problem and making the things easier for human. And whatever we want to do, there is no need of anything we just have this app and after that we can do natural language comprehension when we talk about lexical ambiguity syntactic ambiguity and referential ambiguity so these are the things lexical uh, it's basically the bear stripped from his hand Cinderella had a ball Ron lies asleep in his bed so in this way you can basically this voice recognition working so i'm skipping some of the slides real world knowledge norman rockwell painted people did he do tattoos face painting without background knowledge difficult to parse this into real information so when we talk about the advantages and disadvantages so there are many different things for example if we say ai has many potential benefits uh, it also basically having different several disadvantages and challenges associated with its development and deployment as well. What are these that job displacement? The need of human is going to decrease and through this basically robots and applications, we are solving the problem and we are using in our daily life. So AI automation can lead to displacement of human workers in industries where AI system can perform tasks more efficiently and cost effectively. So where uh, 10 people or 10 humans were working, so this AI basically eliminates the need of these 10 people and only one or two persons are just controller of this app and in this way they can, they are using. Now the thing which is most important, robotics. Mobile robotics, the study of robots that move relative to their environment while exhibiting a degree of autonomy. Sense plan a paradigm. So the world of robot is represented in a complex semantic net in which the sensors on the robot are used to capture the data to build up the net. Sensing, world modeling, planning, control and execution. So the, in this way, all the things are going on and your object is moving according to your direction. So here AI automation can lead to displacement of human workers in industries. And in this way, the need of human and the collaboration of human is going to decrease through this AI as well. And again, one of the worst effect is this one as well, that humans use less brain, less use their brain as compared to uh, the basically while using this AI technology 
reason they have this all the basically workload and search for it has been uh, put on your AI application Your application is doing all things by itself so same like thing that you are doing nothing you are getting uh, just you are putting input and processing is done by AI app or AI, AI object and you are getting outcome so at some extent these are beneficial things but at some extent you can say that these are dangerous things as well reason they are reducing the power of humans their brain memory is going to decrease and as well as you can say that the human potential is also going to decrease reason is this when problem face any problem then they learn something and try to solve that thing and due to this reason the neurons basically become active and generate more neurons in the brain when you think something but on the other hand when humans become uh, just an idle person then what happened that their capacity and ability will going to decrease and which is not a good thing and again job displacement and job uh, number of jobs are going to decrease in market and world due to this AI application and tools bias bias and discrimination is there all AI algorithm can uh, perpetuate bias and discrimination if they are trained on bias data or program with bias tools reason is this these basically things are generated by humans so they whatever the basically algorithm they feed in the basically algorithm or in programming so according to that this app or digital tool will work so if you put a rational or smarter then obviously it will work unbiased the CN or unbiased outcome will be there but on the other hand you can mold the decision of technology of anything the reason you are the controller of technology or this AI algorithm you have written humans are written so due to this reason they can change this thing subsumption architecture rather than trying to model the entire world all the time the robot is given a simple set of behaviors each associated with part of the world necessary for that behavior wander randomly keep going to the left or right avoid obstacles robust transit and station keeping so whatever the robot is going doing it is all basically of this thing that algorithm it has been feeded that move there go there do this and robot will work according to this thing Subsumption architecture. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. So sensors are there. A robot must obey orders given it by a human being. A robot must protect its own existence. So actuators are there. Sensors are there. Sensors are input device. Input, you can say these sensors basically take the input data and forward to microprocessor for processing. While on the other hand, uh, the actuators are those which are having output motors. Whatever the outcome has been generated by microprocessor, according to that, the motor will work, actuator will perform different action, and according to that, they proceed. So a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come for. So humans are always their basically slave, and humans are always basically following uh, giving the order to robot to do these things and according to that they are uh, moving and they are doing different things so privacy and security again there is a one point is also here that robots Sony's eyeball this one is you are looking here these are dogs which are just like twice you are, small robots are there and these are Sony's eyeball you are looking they are moving and they are for security and privacy of your home of your room or something like if unintentionally or anyone basically try to reach your private room or try to cross the boundary of your home or something like so these basically the boards are basically helpful in such a way that they try to save your privacy and security as well so AI system can collect and analyze large amount of data which raises concerns about privacy and security as well. 
so same like when we see this thing that large whatever the data has been feeded in these reports that these persons are allowed to enter the room in the room or at the home so these will according to that proceed but on the other hand if other persons data or allowed persons data uh, is already has been feeded in it then these reports follow and recognize them just like our face recognition uh, sensors and machine and uh, thumb recognition machine are doing but on the other hand if uh, basically not allowed person or unidentified persons uh, data is not there so these basically report proceed according to the security procedure they will basically alarm or they will stop them or they will uh, basically warn them while uh, initiating any burglar alarm or something like so this one you are looking sojourn sojourner rover so whatever you just put it there and this basically move according to the direction and uh, you just basically controlling through this remote or something like but again it autonomous robot as well so uh, you just set the destination and after that it automatically identifies its path or something and it will move spirit or opportunity rover so again this one is a basically a uh, robot which is just basically for um, getting different kinds of things and you are resting there and they are providing you all kinds of connectivity and other things so these are different kinds of robots machine and something like so now we are going to discuss some drawbacks as well <clears throat> So lack of transparency, some AI algorithms are considered black boxes, meaning that the decision making processes are not transparent or easily understood. So it means black boxes is that you are in a dark room, when you are in a dark room, so you cannot do anything, reason nothing is visible to you. And when there is nothing visible, then how you can decide at what it is. So same like things are here that there are some type of lack of transparency is there which always create problem for human and uh, the outcome as outcome will be wrong as well dependence on technology again as i have already told you this thing that when you depend on technology or these tools or you basically because of everything is bad when you excessively use them depend on them then obviously it will be harmful and uh, your physical potential or mental potential will come down on the other hand if you have a lot of threshold on your brain or you have a long list then it will be good that you can manage your things that extra work or extra thing you can solve and you can proceed according to this ai but if you have a normal workload or normal thing and you are putting all the things on the if or solving the things uh, through this AI so it will be worst thing for you reason that you will lose your knowledge and you will get nothing and this thing is harmful for any human you become physically weak your mental potential will come down your memory will come down your mental and physical coordination of your body will become weaker and due to this reason you have a lot of diseases and the other things obesity or the other things so needs human surveillance personal involvement is lacking may overlook social variables possibility of a defective diagnosis unemployment so when we talk about the artificial intelligence so some are the advantages some are the disadvantages it's also in front of you that it creates your it help out to you but it also basically make your work worse one so unemployment is the worst thing and we know very well that due to unemployment in the whole world many countries and many citizens are basically underneath of the uh, basic uh, standard of living as well their standard of living uh, 
line is below their rate is below reason they when they do not have any employment then obviously they cannot earn something and when they do not earn something then they uh, become idle and uh, in this way they have stress or different other uh, social and uh, personal diseases as well reason in the society when uh, the society having unemployment wherever unemployment in the world it basically having worst impact on the society a reason theft stolen items robbery will be common in these areas where unemployment will be common <clears throat> possibility of a defective diagnosis so sometime ai cannot solve our basically matter in such a way at a transparent rate or in our according to our requirement or in a right way personal involvement is lacking this one i have already told you that when five persons or 10 person work together so they have a different kind of outcome or something but on the other hand if only one person is controlling and the person is using ai system or the computer system then obviously he is all in all and he or she can't do anything reason he is the master and he is overall in charge of this thing and ai digital lab whatever it's all basically follow the instruction of the human and in this way Sometime it will be some time dra drastic effect on community and health as well. So dependence of technology we have discussed and uh, unintended consequences. So AI system may produce unintended or unforeseen consequences due to their complexity and unpredictability. Reason is this that when you work on a plan according to a path, then sometime you are unable to do and unable to proceed the final outcome as you like. So ethical concerns again are there. AI raises ethical concerns such as responsibility for AI decision making and ethical implications of developing autonomous system or something. Now, when everything has been faded, whatever the outcome and uh, the result will be there and according to that system will proceed. So there will be no basically uh, unbiased thing is there. Reason, system, it's the thing where all the parts and components work together for a single purpose. And when the system will be near, in the hand of a single person, then system will obey the order, whatever the feeded instruction or the master feeded the instruction in it. So it is important to address these challenges and work to develop AI systems that are ethical transparent and accountable while also discovering also considering their potential impact on society what is impact of ai in the society now now that ai programs can do many work that human do that required intelligence mean ai it can be helpful it can be worse as well the best thing is this, that you enhance your memory or your potential along with this AI. Mean, try to do your work physically, not all the work done by all these applications or tools. A lot of work that nowadays are performed by human will be done by these AI programs. Obviously, uh, there is a excess workload and uh, humans having a lot of burden. So due to these reasons, uh, for the ease of human, these digital apps and tools are being designed and developed. There is economic benefit is in doing so as well. So obviously when these things are there, so human safety is there, human um, job, you can say working hours or the resources or the other things. So it can be helpful and economical benefit as well is there. This is similar to the change in the last decade that many human jobs are replaced computers. We have seen this thing that uh, in the past where different people were working on computers. 
many people basically working physically on different platforms or on different channels or different companies in different companies nowadays they have been replaced and they have been basically uh, they become unemployed as well and the reason is only this the technology so technology if it's having some good impacts as well as it having some worst effect just like unemployment and the illiteracy and uh, you can say unethical attitude attitude unbiased decision and there are many other things so some sharp minded people develop such kind of system to capture the system or to capture the all things but again health is real wealth and uh, there is a need to develop a basic coordination system between body and mind which is the most important thing so for example you do not need type s as speech recognition allows you to create text message using voice so it's very simple there is no need to type your speech you just speak up and automatically your speech recognition software or app automatically will type that thing and make your draft ready so in this way it will it can save your time it can reduce your stress and you can do multiple other things while utilizing this time in uh, typing or the other things many manual labor job in the factory will be replaced by robots we know very well that when robots become common then obviously physical labor will lost their job in the market and in the factory nowadays uh, in factories there is a basically semi autonomous system some plants are totally automatic and but some others are manual where physically workers are working but again if robots are there then the things will be this that uh, where the physical human are working these human la physical labor will be replaced by these robots but still things are going on and these are in basically uh, practice session or in experiment stages mental stages are there human a case of chinese t-shirt factory so what happened that uh, in a t-shirt factory all the labors were replaced by robots and uh, obviously the unemployment become high and uh, these become these basically uh, labor lost the jobs human drivers are not necessary and replaced by robot drivers in driver less car so there is no need of driver nowadays humans become fatigued sometimes they do different kinds of mistakes so there are some advantages so again there are some disadvantages of this uh, ai as well so physical human can become sick ill as well but on the other hand these robots do not become sick or ill they always be ready to perform the action according to your requirement finance traders on the trading floor are being replaced by automated training so what happened in pharma pharma in financial institutions the traders and the managers they basically lost their job reason that this artificial intelligence having a built in functionality where whatever the things and parameter have been added in it according to that they produce a rational outcome or trading outcome and in this way humans basically lost their jobs so it simple means that ai is replacing humans physically uh, on different places but the best thing is this that humans while using these ai they can basically refine the outcome and the product as well department store become more self serving and e buying using less and less store workers now what happened that everything what you are doing it's all basically done by the robot and the thing automatically will be there okay uh 
so department stores again it's a mega stores obviously there so things are uh, there are hundreds or thousands workers are there but if we have the robots then the things will be in a system and automatically it can be managed and become easy for us as well however there are plenty of jobs that are for human rearing your children education art music sports service for elderly people so it means that technical side become vacant due to a uh, technical side not become vacant due to robots and uh, obviously uh, these jobs will left where humans will be able to serve and uh, it has been said that uh, there are different places where uh, humans cannot be replaced humans are very important and everything and every work is basically for humans we are humans and we are the inhabitant of this planet and we have to save this earth but the reason of this whole research technology is this that we become one and all the communities and the system integrated to each other so that we could save ourselves we could protect ourselves we could basically enhance our potential or in this way we can get some optimal outcome as the shift of technology bring about the change in the way we work we need to change the way we prepare our next generation so this is the thing that due to this digital technology we are preparing our 21st century skills problem solvers reason is the basically gradually we are upgrading ourselves same like we have we are having different diseases and problems as well and our challenges again become bigger and bigger but we have to work reason we are the survivor of this earth and we have to save this planet and save this earth we have to save the human generation as well humans always basically humans always want to basically uh, help to anyone but these digital technologies having some uh, advantages and some disadvantages as well but again there is a need to use them uh, rationally in a balance so that we could manage uh, the whole world system in a right way ai in society principle satya nadal ka talk in june 20166 principles ai must be designed to assist humanity it must be transparent it must maximize efficiency without destroying the dignity of people it must be designed for intelligent privacy it must have algorithm accountability it must guard against bias so these are the six principle has been designed to protect the humans while using ai reason if we give more power to this ai and make them basically uh, make the rivals the humans and the ai make them rivals of each other and if we if human uh, unintentionally or intentionally they give the power of human and stick of ruling then obviously there will be worse side uh, for human so ai should be controlled it must guard against bias it should be it must have algorithm accountability it must be designed for intelligent privacy it must maximize efficiency without destroying the dignity of people it must be transparent and it must be designed to assist humanity reason this is a tool designed by humans for human humans must be in control human creates human consumes so remember this thing whatever human made they having uh, what it's not you can say that 100% error free product but having a lot of other errors and problems as well 
but we have to believe on this thing that whatever has been developed by god it's perfect thing humans always basically do some mistakes and to error is human and we always do some experiment and according to that we having limited capacity of functionality intelligence and mentality so same like we do not know everything but we attempt to solve and to help the humanity future of ai as computer become faster cheaper there will be more and more powerful ai program so if we just look at this thing in 1950 when the computer was invented uh, the name was i think um, i forgot the name so at that time uh, its size was just like a big house or a big room but what happened experts engineers gradually work on it and after that they developed a smart and uh, basically small personal computer which can be basically easily carry and can be easily its position can be changed so whatever what what's happening there that uh, the things are becoming smaller and smaller but efficiency wise they are becoming faster and more powerful and reliable as well so you just look at the mobile of nokia double double 300 in 1990 or 95 so you know very well that mobile having only one feature that you are able to communicate to someone but nowadays you are having android mobiles apple phones so these are all having a lot of functionality and specifications in it where you are re- always ready to communicate to different people you have different applications in it uh, according to the purpose you can install and you can uninstall different application you can connect to anyone you have different application it's just like a small a small laptop for you or your personal computer on which you can do your all work and you can do anything so mobile it's become small or a portable personal computer of yourself now we are able to do anything we can communicate we can send email we can chat we can open facebook account twitter linkedin and we can do anything instagram or anything while moving while going everywhere we can do anything but on the other hand if we just look at the thing in 1990 then the basically portability was not there so whatever you have to do you have to sit on computer you have to go to office and then you are able to do that thing so software that provides services will be driven by ai in almost every aspect imaginable <clears throat> so ai is just a basically clone of human processing nothing else as we process different thing so ai is just a basically clone or replica of human brain processing i always said to my students this thing that uh, computer is a device uh, experts want a machine which think like human brain so now we see this thing that they have developed a microprocessor and after that artificial intelligence now we can say simply this thing that as human brain works same like it's going on and it's working the strength of ai are in logic and memory the advantage will be even greater as technology progress and we are looking that as the time is going on and up it's going up and up use cases you are looking covid robots which reality for preparing for surgery genetical therapy or something so you are looking in these pictures opportunities untapped treatment areas enabling ai techniques resulting in lower cost and improved functions so you are looking here that we can do this in summary the strength of human is compassion creativity people will serve other people better you can solve the problem of others you can serve the community in a better way technology can divide rich or poor but also it can empower and democratize to others as well 
conclusion so in conclusion we can say that artificial intelligence is forming its best to expand the healthcare sector and every sector of the life ai in healthcare is assisting doctors nurses and even patient health and encouraging them in recovery even faster ai will help patients in course dropping with its developed and better credible diagnosis ai provide doctors time to concentrate slightly on desk work and more on understanding patients and caring for them nowadays you are looking that camera will be sent inside of the body to find out and to see that uh, what are the basically internal organs structure or its shape or something like wounds or something like so these are all the things thank you very much Uh, <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir, for your rich content presentation, which can impact our knowledge seeker surely. After a presentation, I have our knowledge seeker can learn something new, which is our only intention: learn and grow together as a knowledge seekers. Once again, thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. Now, sir, it's time for our question of the session, which is the one more valuable part of our regular webinars. Honorable sir, please stay with us. After a short video, we'll be back in our session part two, which is our question answer part. Okay, sir? Okay. okay. Dear IGP, notice seeker, please ask your question in the comment box as much as you want to know from our speaker. Thank you. After question answer, we have webinar certification and all in quiz competition. After short, a short video, we'll be back. So please stay with us and enjoy our question answer session. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for our question answer session. Let's welcome back our speaker. <clears throat> Hello, sir. I'm audible. Yes, you are audible, sir. <clears throat> Once again, welcome back, sir. Uh, sir, our first question from Facebook user How will artificial intelligence tools be effectively? utilized in the context of teaching 21 uh, century learners 
So answer is very simple that when we talk about artificial intelligence, so it gives you a practice time. It gives you environment while minimizing your resources and with less effort, you can train yourself. For example, uh, pilots nowadays are being trained through different uh, simulated software. And after that, they are able to physically uh, they fly their plane or something like that. But at once, it's not that they directly move on to plane and basically fly the plane. Uh, this is the best thing that a artificial intelligence, they can do the best thing is this, that they can basically correlate their mind with the operative features that how to control the things. So when they become aware of the interface, environment and the controlling mechanism then obviously they are able to perform in a better way okay thank you sir uh, <clears throat> the next question from Cindy Udatupun. sir could you verify describe how artificial intelligence can affect learning teaching and education thank you sir so its answer is very simple that uh, we know very well that quizzes quiz lot and Poplet, Padlet, there are different application softwares are available. Even your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So they all having different basically things. And uh, while developing or designing these application tools, it having a basically a deep research is there. They the basically the experts work on pedagogical approaches while keeping the things in mind that how we can engage the young learners and in this way we can improve its interest its learning its knowledge and you are looking nowadays that children love to play different digital games on mobiles on laptop or on computer one thing is this that uh, we did not use these digital tools or application in our childhood time but if you just look at this thing that now the young generation who is using these they are more intelligent and more rational as compared to us reason is this they are using that interface or these rational outcome or rational tools and applications due to which reason they basically think uh, progressively and their speed efficiency reliability is much more than us Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the next question from again Facebook user: What is the best approach to introduce the AI tools to learners who have troubles with the advent of technology? So practice makes a man perfect. So remember this thing: If you have any problem with the technology or the apps, so best thing is this: Just try to spend time with these tools. These tools and these digital application significantly designed in such a way that when you take the interest, then automatically you will basically uh, forget everything, whatever in your brain. And you become fully involved and engaged in these application and tools. And this one is the basically uh, required outcome. Uh, PUBG game, you know very well that it having a basically significant drawback of this that humans lost their basically uh, rational thinking that it's that the next move the next step can be cause of their death or something like so you can see this thing all these things are so much um, basically rationally designed after our deep learning research work and while taking each and everything of human uh, while they're learning their age and the content or all these things. So the best approach is this, just spend the time with these tools and gradually you will learn and you will become addict of that thing. Once again, well, thank you, sir. Uh, I think there is no more question. We, co we covered all of our question. Once again, thank you so much, sir, for your time in IGP. We have learned a lot from you. With new topic, it will add some value to our day-to-day activity along with our academic and professional growth. Honorable, so sir, hope to see you again with a new topic and you need it. Thank you, sir, and take care.
Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, dear IGP knowledge seeker, uh, today are some technical problem. We cannot share our certificate code. We provide our certificate code in a short time. Thank you. Dear IGP knowledge seeker, today are some technical problem. We cannot share our certificate code. We provide our certificate code in a short time. Thank you. Dear IGP knowledge seeker, uh, I repeat today are some technical problem. We cannot share our Certificate code. We provide our certificate code in a short time. Thank you. Dear IGP knowledge seeker, this is uh, now it's time for our quiz session. Dear IGP knowledge seeker, it's time for the most engaging part of this webinar, which is the an online quiz competition, which is our regular webinar activity. Now time for the online quiz competition to join the online quiz competition properly. Please follow my instruction carefully. First, you have to go www.slido.com and find today's quiz or scan this QR code for the joining. Quiz code is global IGP. Quiz code is global IGP. After short video, we will start our quiz session. So please join slide with code and code is global IGP. After short video, we'll be back. So please stay with us and enjoy our quiz session. Again, welcome back, everyone. It's time for our quiz session, which is the mo most engaging part of our webinar session. It is easy to join our quiz session, so mention your friends to join our quiz session. To join our quiz session, you have to follow my instruction carefully. First, you have to go www.slido.com. Then you have to enter the code, and the code is global IGP, and the code is global IGP. Dear IGP knowledge seekers, please. Go to www.slider.com, then you have to enter the code, and the code is global IGP. We'll pick your name from Slido, so join it your full name, which will directly printed on your certificate. We'll pick your name from Slido, so join it your full name, which will directly printed on your certificates. Here, IGP only seeker, we are still waiting for your joining, so please, everyone, join early. Already 30 people joined with us. We are waiting, still waiting for you. So please, everyone, join quickly. To join our quiz session, you have to follow my instruction carefully. First, you have to go www.slido.com. Then you have to enter the code, and the code is 
Global IGP. And don't forget to mention your friends to join our quiz session. With 30 people, we are going to start our quiz session. So please be ready, everyone. Let's start. Our first question is negative impacts of artificial intelligence can society could affect through option one, affiliated hacking. Second option is new jobs. Negative impacts of artificial intelligence on society could affect through is it option one, affiliated hacking. And second option is new jobs. And the correct answer is option one, affiliated hacking. And 92% people are right. Now move to the next question. And the question is, not one of the positive impacts of artificial intelligence on society. Is it option autonomous transportation? Second option unfair algorithm. Already 20 people gave the answer. We have only three seconds. Now you're going to see our correct answer. And the correct answer is unfair algorithm. And 68% people are right. Next question is, artificial intelligence is the intelligence of option one, computer, second option is machines. Artificial intelligence is the intelligence of option one, computer, second option is machines. And the correct answer is machines and 69% people are right. Now, move to the next question. The question is positive impacts for artificial intelligence. Option one, affiliated uh, hacking. And second option is healthcare sector. Positive impacts for artificial intelligence. Is it option or, and, or option two? Uh, And the correct answer is option one, healthcare sector. Now move to our fifth now question. The question is definition of artificial intelligence. Is it option a set of rules that a machine uh, can have to do attacks? Second option is acting in a way that simulates or mimics humans. Definition of artificial intelligence. Is it option one, a set of rules that a machine can follow to learn how to do attacks? And second option is acting in a way that simulates or mimics humans. Now uh, we are going to see our correct answer and the correct answer is option one, acting in a way that simulates or mimics humans. Come um, after next question. The question is the picture of a man battling an artificial intelligence would be an example of second option is character with society and then second option is character with technology. This picture of a man battling an artificial Intelligence would be an example of dash. Character society and second character with society and second option is character with technology.
And the correct answer is character based technology. And 97% people are right. Move to our next question. What percentage of artificial intelligence, Professor Armel? Is it 80%? And the second option is 90%. What percentage of artificial intelligence professor are male? Is it 80% and second option is 90%? And the correct answer is uh, 80% and 97% of people right. Now, move to the next question. Autofill is a form of artificial intelligence. Is it true or false? Autofill is a form of artificial intelligence. Is it true or false? We have only 50, 40 seconds. Please uh, answer the question within nine seconds. Now we're going to see the word correct answer and the correct answer is true and 81% people are right. Most next, combining multiple, multiple human expert intelligence is one of the is one of the artificial intelligence impacts. Is it true or false? Combining multiple human expert intelligence is one of the one of the artificial intelligence impacts. And the correct answer is true and 82 percent before that and our last and final question is artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence is it true or false yeah, artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence is it true or false um now going to see our correct answer and the correct answer is true and 76 percent people are right congratulation charlie salioju yamaguchi is our top one in second position we have cherry and e and fatty in third position we have charlie magni e Bernasar. in fourth position we have Lutrim braha in fifth position we have leah fakunoda uh, congratulations, our top 10 quiz competition winner. We have all of your name which you enter, which you enter during joining. We'll pick your name from Slido and prepare certificate and we'll post them on our Facebook official page. Our Facebook official page is Institution of Global Professional. Congratulations to our webinar online quiz competition winner top 10. Congratulations again. Slido will take a few minutes for finalizing the result and after that, we will issue our online quiz competition certificate on our Facebook official page and group. Our Facebook official page and group name is Illustrate of Global Professionals. At the end moment of our session, we can say properly feed your skill, never stop learning, cost life, never stop teaching us. Be happy and stay safe. See you again and again. We want your participation in our every program. If you want to live a happy life, try to go not to people or things, Albert Einstein. Before I say or hit the end live button again, wants to thanks all IGP knowledge seeker for your active participation as always. In the next session, till then, stay happy and best. Thank you.